depends on many things. Of course, in countries like Mexico, which only 2% of all crimes go investigated, which means 98% of all crimes go not, are never investigated and never sentenced, uh, then you have pure impunity. It's the same thing in Guatemala and El Salvador and Nicaragua and most Latin America, and of course, Africa and uh, many countries. Then you have other kind of impunity in different countries, like uh, European countries, for example, in Spain. In, uh, when you have cases like this, or in the US, for example, the United States is a very good example because they do believe the American government, the North American government, believes that they are the police of the world and they forgot to be the police of their own home. And we're trying to track them to notice the crimes that are being committed in their own country. So um, one of the things that is going on in, in many of the countries that have a good uh, criminal justice system, uh, pretty much uh, fair rule of law and that it works, um, is not really working regarding trafficking, especially not only internal trafficking, which is a huge problem, but also international trafficking. And one of the reasons that I try to explain in the book that I think that we have to start discussing now everywhere around the world, has a lot to do with public policy regarding migration rights. Uh, I, I, I interviewed this guy in Mexico that is a, a high-level civil, civil servant, a very decent guy, who is exactly in charge of giving the permits <coughs> to these uh, entrepreneurs in Mexico that have sweatshops in which they ex exploit workers uh, in order to make Really, really fancy and nice clothes for Amer North Americans and Canadians to wear. So this guy got Kamil Nassif, one of the masters that I got in the little fight with. Um, he, he received Kamil Nassif at his office, and Kamil Nassif came, this businessman, you know, very rich guy. He came to his office and he said, listen, I had to um, bring 1,000 Chinese workers to Mexico for six months, and I want their permits now. I am a friend of the president. Back then it was Vicente Fox. I'm not a friend of Vicente Fox. Did he call you to tell you that I was coming? And to his surprise, yes, the president did call him to tell him, you know, you just help this guy. He's a very, very good businessman. He's helping the economy in Mexico. He didn't explain it was by slaving people. He's helping the economy. So anyway, he, the president ordered this, this high level civil servant to uh, fasten the process of getting all these work permits for the Chinese uh, citizens to be working there. So the guy said, you know, Mr. Nassif, it, he, he had already been noticed by my book, so he knew this, the civil servant knew about them coming Nassif, and he said, you know, you have to go through the process, is the law. You have to fill up each form with all the information of each Chinese citizen that is coming into the country. And he came with his two accountants and he goes, no, 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 no. are you crazy? I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm coming and I say, what are you expecting? You know, you fill it up. And he said, no. And he said, what? Are you, are you, are you afraid that these guys are going to flee? Don't worry about it. You know, we have all these freaking Chinese in a small place that is closed down. They won't have the passport and they won't be able to move around. They don't speak Spanish. So they will work for uh, several months here, and then I will pack them to go back home. So don't worry about it. You know, they will be packed here and controlled. So this is, in reality, what is happening around the world. Most countries, including the United States and Canada, are giving away these working permits for certain citizens to do certain kind of jobs that locals won't do for that amount of money, which means picking up strawberries or working in the fields or making garments. So they give them special permits, uh, immigration permits, and they let them be there, slaved, under slavery conditions, and many people here are nodding, so I know you know. Um, we even have a poet here that has written about that. And uh, then you, you have these people that all of a sudden find a job, they want to be part in their house, they are making a better life, even enslaved. And all of a sudden, six months after, they have to leave. So what they do, they try to escape to stay in that country. And then the country.
country and the immigration office is going like, no way, you were not slave, you were brought here to work. Now, this is the law, you go back to your country. Uh, so we have to start challenging that. The way the immigration laws around the world are made are based on discrimination and exploitation and pure slavery. And we have to challenge that everywhere around the world. Otherwise, the immigration officers, as nice and good people they might be, because we do find some of them that are nice, most of them are just following the law. And they, what they call now, they are very politically correct, around the world, they call, they don't call it deportation now, because it sounds awful, doesn't it? It's very, very bad. They call it repatriation. So you're just supposed to send the people back to their own home, you know, to their family, um, to be happy with their family. But the problem with the repatriation thing is that they are sending these people back to the place which they were sold from, or slave, or they made a deal in which they most probably were made voodoo, as you have just told us, but also um, in many cases, as in Sweden, I found all these women from Africa that were in forced prostitution in, in Stockholm, and uh, they were alone there, but their children were back at home. And they knew that the traffickers had contact with the children, and the children were hostages. And this woman tried to explain that to, to the authorities in, in, uh, in, in Stockholm, and fortunately, in this case, authorities believed them and tracked back the children and were able to bring the children here So, because of the new law in Sweden, which is, I think, one of the best laws in the world right now regarding anti-trafficking because they are really giving women and men, in these cases, that are being trafficked a real choice because let's not lie to each other. If you, the only chance you have to survive in this world, it doesn't matter if it's the United Kingdom or Mexico, or Canada, or any, anywhere else, the, the only thing, or the only way to survive is to become a slave. There's something really, really, really bad with this world. We have to understand that we have to change immigration laws. They're very hypocritical, and very, and absolutely centered in making the criminals richer, and the poor people, and especially women and children, uh, more vulnerable than ever. Yeah.